the, the topic is the blogging in a blocking country. So it's very, we, when we talk about blog and why the blog has the social, uh, social change impact, we should come back to, to the arranger of the blog. Why blog can make a very big impact to the social change and the democracy? It's just because two reasons. The first, you should be, have an election because uh, if you have elections, so public opinion does matter. So that's why the blogger can become a blog can become a mo mobilization tool for the election, and also um, for social change party. For example, the NGO part, blog does matter because uh, you can use it as a lobby, lobby tool. That means you can use the um, the blogger to present. The, the voice of the people and use the voice of the people to lobby the organization, uh, lobby the government. But these two very important uh, uh, reason in China we does, does not exist. That we have no election, we have no any lobby cases. So that why blog, blog matters in China. So, uh, so they changed China in totally different way, and the way is not familiar with, you know, Western peoples. So when we discuss of that, we should um, to, if you look at, we have a lot of media project here to monitor the internet the news and the internet to comment. For example, the, the glo global voice online, the Chinese part, and uh, for example, the the, the other, the U, UCLA is the, the Chinese me, China, China Media Project and the U, Hong Kong University's project. All the projects want to gather the very sharp news from the internet, Chinese internet. But the most important thing I want to pay attention is that in the year 2004 to 2005, these two years, most of the sharp, sharp news from Chinese internet is from bloggers. But after that, most of the news is from chat rooms. That means it's very, you know, because you, you, the people, you, the people in the States, you, you see the English translation of the blog. You don't know what's the, what's the original from, but we can tell the from. I mean, in the, before the year, two, uh, I mean, during the year 2004, 2005, these two year, golden years, bloggers dominate the news gathering especially very sharp news, dissenting news. So that's why all the foreign media should cover the bloggers, Chinese bloggers, to get the news. But it's ended. What's the begin? Begin with the Mu Zimei. It's a, very, it's a sex diary. Mu Zimei is a, is a woman. He always he writes a sex diary, a blogger. In, in, on the blog, it's, you know, how many pe men they have sex with, about 70%, uh, seven men. It's the, it's, the, it's the early months of the 2004. But end with the case of my case. My, my Microsoft uh, blog was shut down by the government. After that, you can see the government can know every detail how to control the content of the blog. They set up the keyword system. They, they, they use the firewall. They use the self-censorship. Anyway, they, they know how to control that. That means after the golden years of 2004, 2004 and 2005, the blogger, golden years. We come back to the old years of the chat room years. Chat room does exist in, exist in China it's about since the 90, 1998. That means about 10 years life, life. Very long time. We still use chat room to gather very sharp news. That's very important things. When we talk about Web 2.0, why this just happened in China? We come back to the past, not go on. We why blog blogging just the end, but we come back to the chat room. Chat room is very web 1.0 things, very old things. We never, you know, to to see very important role in, in this in the state, but in China it's still very important because, and not only the chat room, but also the email. You know, email is older, much older things about was introduced in China since 1996. Yeah, maybe around that years. That means about uh, 12 years life in China. But it's all very important elite networking. 
For example, the, uh, sharing very secret information, very important information about politics, about religious, about uh, the, the social, academic, they through the mailing list. They just uh, go through the mailing list. That means we, China, what we used now to, you know, to, to make the social change is using the web 1.0, 1.0 things. For example, the mailing list, for example, the chat room. We don't use the web 2.0. Why? Because why, why, when we talk about Web 2.0, we mention these very two important uh, functions. First is the de uh, democra democratization. Sorry, democratization. 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 Okay, okay. <laughs> you got me on. So, so what is new word? <laughs> and the other thing is <laughs> the other thing is decentralization. <laughs> Decentralization is a very important function of the Web 2.0. That means because of decentralization, so people can speak a voice. People matters because people can use many, many parts of the people's voice, can organize, become blogosphere voice, can become public opinion. But it only happens in the democratic, democratic countries because the government the, so we, we, when we review the blog very carefully, we found blog they, is not really decentralized things because they need, they need the servers, central servers. Every blog, for example, blogger.com, for example, web, uh, wordpass.com, they have servers. Um, uh, thousands and to millions of users to use one blog DSP, blog survey private provider, at their, at their base. So it is easy for the government to control and easy to block, to firewall, or to censorship. But in, in US, in the state, we don't control that because it's about freedom of speech. Even the Bush, Bush administration is, is so conservative, but they don't care about, because it's the, it's the human right of the American people. They have the right is born to, it's a born right. But in China, I, I don't think that, I think the Chinese government does not have no hesitate to control that if, because it's not so decentralized. But if we look at the, the email and you look at the chat room, it's not so centralized like blog. It's very decentralized because you, of course, they can find the chat rooms and block it. But every <laughs> server can have a chat room. It's very hard for the government to find any chat room overseas. It's very hard for them. For email, email use not use the web, uh, you know, web function. They use the, the, the POP protocol. It's, you, I think, it, of, course, of course, it it's easy to control. But it's no, if you control, it will be, become very impact to the common communication between us. For example, everybody use Gmail. Can you block Gmail? No, because even the business guy, even the government guy can use the Gmail too. So <laughs> it's very hard for, so that's why we charity still use G email and the chat room to s express our freedom speech, something like this. Yeah. But blogger, no, the happy time is just the end. <laughs> <laughs> so how about how about we 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 come we don't I don't want to use some kind of new media theory to to describe that because in China it's not new media, blog is not kind of the new media but it's a it's an old media thing because before the internet we have no media we have <coughs> propaganda propaganda means one direction, pa the party want to speak their voice you just listen, but. When we face the internet, it's a two direction. That means the party, all the media can express their opinions, but the people can comment, can, can feedback that. It's a real beginning of Chinese media. So all the things now in, in the following discussion, I used the, the very old theory of the media. It's not about new media. So about, uh, just about, uh, I, I mentioned about the information flow. So they use, just use the very chat rooms, you, they use the, the the email to express the news, it's not the blogger. And how about the, the today's present situation about bloggers? You know, <clears throat> you know, when we talk about, you know, time pick up the you as the, the, the time people of the year, but maybe that means you are the media, but in China, I'm not. 
it's not you are the media. It's me. And it's a, you are you are the media. The meanings is so common bloggers can become common blogs can become media. But in China, it's the it's the opposite way. Media become blogs. That means very important happened in two thousand six. I think two thousand five. Sina.com. Sina.com is a very mainstream news portal in China. Every newspaper should put the content free to the Sina.com. That means in Chinese, the young people don't read newspapers. They read Sina.com because it's easy to read every newspaper, every province newspaper. They don't use, use the, to subscribe to one newspaper because it's more expensive. But look at, to browse the, the Sina.com is easy and it's free. But this so mainstream media in the 2005, they set up their blog service. After that, blog service, blog in China just changed from a so amateur one to a very professional one. What's the dominant part of the China Sina bloggers? They are celebrities, they are professors, they are journalists. That means they are, they are, they are VIPs. We call the Ming Ren Book of VIP bloggers. China, blogging in China become very mainstream. That means why we just like something, just a Huffington Post. You know, Huffington Post. It's just the, to invite a very famous guy to become the writers of the. This kind of blog is not really blog. It's a it's a kind of column, because in China we have we we lack we China lacks two things very important, very critical to. To the to the media society, the first thing is the Hollywood Hollywood style of the reporting, because the celebrity want to some kind of public relation, you know, announcement. They they need the news. But in China, we have no the agency or some kind of business to run for that. So when the Sina blog happened, all the celebrities, all the very famous entertainment guys found a way to, be, be, to do some public relationship. That means they use that to do some kind of club announcement. To, so every paparazzi of the tabloid in China, every day update and refresh the Sina.com Sina bloggers. They found that every entertainment news and the celebrity news follow this way. And, China also lack of the syndicate of the column. You know, column is very popular in the U U.S. media. So the Tom's Freedom and, and you know very important. And, and but China, we have no syndicate. That means you can only write for one newspaper. That means one newspaper means one province. You lack of the readership. But this kind of blog, Sina.com blog, can give column very much readership, of course free, but very much readership. Because of the readership, readership they can, you know, add their cost of the money. Where we, you know, negotiate with the media. So that's very, very good way. And also the newspaper use the Sina.com blog to find which, who is the new column. It's a, it's a way of the rec recruit the new blog, the columns. That means when we talk about blogs that uh, happened in Sina.com, it's not about blogger, the real blogger, real revolutionary blogger in China. It's about very old things, column, Hollywood style, paparazzi. And it's about, uh, talk about celebrities. How about journalists? Journalists is very funny things. You know, in the world, only two countries have very strange, the journalists that dominate, uh, dom uh, sorry, Dominate. Sorry, the, the journalists dominate the famous bloggers. Only two countries have this thing happened. First is China, the other is Iran. Iran also have the situation that we I can not I cannot imagine a New York Times staff writer can become very famous blogger. No, never happened because the blogger is just to, to be against them. It's a, it's a, it's a com, kind of you know, you know competition. You are the mainstream media. I'm the against you. I'm against you. I oppose you. This is the two sides of the of the media. But in China, no. Most very important, very famous journalists, the editor, they have bloggers. They are famous bloggers. That means they are together. Mainstream media and liberal uh, and a blogger, they are together. Why this happened in China? It's because of we we come back to the story of the 2000, 2000 years. 
you know, I said before that before in uh, in in the nineteen eighties we are, we are no media. We are only propaganda machines. But in the nineteen nineties, the media group want to become very uh, uh, you know uh, market. We call it market market market. Marketization. Marketization. Market. Sorry. It's a. They, they join, become a part of the market. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that means the uh, news group, they organized and united, uh, become very, very big news group. For example, the Southern News Group, <coughs> Shanghai News Group, and the, uh, the Beijing News News Group. Very big ones. It's much bigger than uh, become a new real news corporations. But the problem happened is about the shortage of the labourhood. That means we have no workers, staff workers. We have no reporters. We have no enough reporter reporter to feed feed up all the kind of the expand expansion of the of the media. So that's why the reason since the two thousand years, since the year of two thousand, uh, hundreds of the journalism G school just uh, founded in China. Now Chinese about in China we have about one thousand journalist school in China. So much, but it's very quick. It's, you you can trust them. So the, the the graduate school, the student from the G school are very stupid because education are very stupid. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 media can't trust them. So how can they do? They just uh, turn to the media, to, to the internet, because I, just I said, in the from the year of two, to 1998 to the 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 chat room become very famous. So there there is a very famous we call it the famous netizen. Famous netizen that means you are very good at the write the commentary in the, on the internet. I'm a, myself is a. You know, example of the very famous uh, netizens. Before that, I'm only a hotel receptionist. Mm -hmm. Every day, I just uh, welcome to my hotel. It's just uh, <laughs> such a things. But when I the internet things happened in 1998, I write the commentary on the internet. I was hired by a news media in 2001, become a chief correspondent of the media without any experience of the. <laughs> Just things happened, you know. It's very funny. Just like a, it's a miracle. Many, many hundreds, of thousands, of, and thousands of the young people have no any background of the political education and the journalism education, social education. My college, my my major is computer. Without any knowledge about politics and the social and the writing. You know, but I was hired by the media. Become very, I get a very high salary, very high salary from zero to, to 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 middle class. It's got just just a very jump. It's a big jump. This big jump just happened in the 2000 and 2003. These three years, thousands of the very famous netizens become journalists. That means if you look up now the media, newspapers, the TV station, especially. Even the central TV station, the very official, you were found very famous and very important journalism. Inside them, they are come from internet. So why? So that's the reason why the 2004 the blogger era come. The guys in the media, because they have an internet heart. Even outside the surface is very conservative, and under the propaganda control, the media. Old media fashion, but the inside them there is an internet heart. So they they welcome the bloggers, blogs, and become the, the dominant power of the bloggers. That's why the reason in China, the the bloggers and the journalists, we they are together. They are not disappear, uh, the, the, the party like like a, like a, like America. So that's the journalist part. But after the golden years, you know. Still have because censorship is, they they just uh, they they found that because blog is so personal, they they write you write a blog that means it's your blog. If you write very sensitive, okay, your blog your shut down your blog easily shut down blog. So after two thousand and four, two thousand and five, and even the journalists themselves they can't post very sensitive blogs. They just, you know, to to turn to the chat room, very old one, turn to the old old years. 
Okay, so we when we talk about uh, that, so you you found very important thing in Chinese block sphere. It's not about new media. It's about recruitment, the, the human resource of the old old media. That means the internet. During the year of the two, 1998 to 2003, it's about four years, five years, the internet changed the inside of the Chinese media. That means it's a very funny thing for the states people, and the people in the state, they, you can't understand. The guy censored my blogs. We are friends. We, every week, we, we just have the chat, we, 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 we eat. We we have we are close friend. We we says, I'm sorry. I should shut down your blog. Of course, I understand. No problem. How about we meet together this weekend or oh, kayaking something like this? So we are <laughs> we are very close friends. That means the, the censor the <laughs> yeah. the guy was censored wow. and the guy censor. <coughs> we are together. That means that's we come back to the Chinese philosophy. We are we are lack of the religion. We are no religion. We did we didn't trust in God. That means. We can live in two phases. One phase is very, very working phases. That means I'm called. I'm sorry. I'm, it's my job. I know you are right, but it's my job. I should do that, but you can't understand because we can exchange. When you get the job of me, you can do the same thing to me. I can understand too, of course. <laughs> but in the inside, they are very liberal, very, very liberal because they live in the era of the internet and the market, because we know which is the right thing. But it's a different thing. So, and another blog is about uh, copycat of the American bloggers. It's uh, IT geeks. We have IT geeks. It's a, every detail. It's a, it's a copycat of the, every detail of, of American Web 2.0, up to uh, Web 2.0 applications. For example, you have Twitter. We have Twitter. But. To be the truth, to tell the truth, I don't think Twitter can become very popular in China because it's so centralized. The, the server, everything, every service, every application, if you should have some centralized service, you can't go where in China. Because Chinese can easily to control you, censorship to you, or block you. Easy. So if you talk about the block sphere, okay, we should give the two versions. The first is the American version, the second is the Chinese, but total difference. So the IT geeks have become very complicated of the every steps thing. They use the new technology, uh, new media theory. But I will mention very important things. If you, there is some citizen journalism in China, there will be IT geeks. I don't think other, for example, the journalists or very common people can become very citizen journalists. Why? Because you need money. You need a job. Only IT geeks can easily find a job. But if you're a journalist, you need you 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 <coughs> not need to do some kind of anti-mainstream citizen journalism. Citizen journalism means you're not a journalist, but you do the journalist work. So you should need a job first. Only geek can have this spare time and spare money to do that. And also, they know the technology and know how to copy the version of the American applications. So if you want to find IT, uh, I find so-called citizen journalists in China, so turn to the geeks. We, are very, we, we have a very famous guy we call Zola Zhou. Zola, Zhou Chu Guang, Zola Zhou. He's very famous. He is a real version of the of the copycat of the American citizen journalism. Very, you know, you can they hide they you know they use the internet to, to get the sponsors. They someone gives the camera. They just take camera to the to the to the side to take the every camera <coughs> to the live web webcast of all the situation happened, and the only problem the the. They get they get the money from the guy from from the people. This is the problem because citizen journalists in market they didn't get the money. They earn money from the reporting, but this guy earn money from that. So it's a, a, a totally different. But only IT IT geeks can have the spare time to do that. Okay. We talk about censorship and impact. So as you, as my as I've mentioned that. All the Web 2.0, 2.0 application when you turn to come to China, everything changed because 
all the web web you have the server. Chinese are easy to block your servers. So that's very funny things. Every big web 2.0 things in China, we have a Chinese version of, of copycat. For example, you have Google, we have Baidu. You have you have the YouTube. We don't use YouTube. We we use the uh, Tudou. You know, you have everything. We have everything in Chinese, but uh, we don't use the original one. Why? Because it is easy for Chinese local company to accept the every detail control rule of the censorship. They can accept. Although Microsoft try very hard to compromise and Yahoo, but they don't do to do. They they can do enough for the Chinese government. Only local guys can do enough. You know, for example, Baidu. So that's for the reason. That's that means all the very good thing except Gmail. Gmail not because Gmail. We have no copyright of Gmail. Gmail. Gmail is so good. So I, I can't imagine some something in China can take place of it. So that's very good news for us. We have Gmail, not Google, because Google we have Baidu. Google, you can't use your China very freely because sometimes you, if you, if you search some very sensitive pages, it's just blocked down. You can't use it within the, the 15 minutes. So, um, so how about YouTube? YouTube things, for for example, video blog. <coughs> video blog is very hard. It's not so popular in China. Why? Two reasons. The first reason is the content was so sensitive. So if you do some social change video, video blog or journalist video blog, just to censor you because it's easy. The second thing is you need the camera. It's money. We Chinese are poor. Because uh, 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 even we come richer, richer, but now still poor. We can't buy easily about the camera. So video blog and about YouTube. YouTube is very slow in China. Nobody go that. So what's left? If we said everything is controlled, is censored in China, what's left? What's the hope? I think the hope is social network and, and organization. You know what's left? I, I, I talk about chat room. Chat room, chat room is still left because it's hard to censor that. So we can we can also use the chat room to 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 leak the news and all about email Gmail you know very funny including us we I have a, a organization of a think tank like the international political think tank it's about the membership of the think tanks that you know um, around the world because they are the for the student in the foreign universities they are scholars they are columnists. We use the Gmail group to organize them, even we are in different country, different time zone. But it's okay because Gmail can easy. And we use the Gmail emailing group, Gmail group, to every week to to deliver deliver the magazines. So it's not only my case. Another case, for example, <coughs> there's a very famous under ch underground church magazine. They very seriously discuss the Chris, Christian. Christianity in, inside China, very serious commentary and discussion. And about another case is my friend, independent uh, book review, like a uh, New York book review. They just want to follow that, but also use email magazines. That means in China, we just come back to 10 years ago. This is not a new error, it's an old error, but still works. I think why this still work? Because it's about networking. Uh, People can use Gmail, can use messengers, MSN messengers, can use ch chat room, can use uh, Gtalk, can use a short message to organize, to find people with, fit with very similar to you. That means we have to share the same interests. That networking, uh, elite networking is very important rule for Chinese social changing because you can you can easily to organize the use the internet. For example, <coughs> I think um, it's a very famous protest and a demonstration happened on the street in Xiamen for two days very peacefully. About twenty about twenty thousand people go on the street against the. Uh, uh, chemical factory in Xiamen, and, and the government didn't didn't intervene because you know, because why why cause this uh, demonstration? Just a, a very famous blogger called Nian Yue. Nian Yue is not a very amateur blogger. It's not um, about um, non mainstream. He is the most almost one of the most very famous 
column in China, columnist in China, very famous. So his blog just triggered this this protest. Why this protest can go very peacefully? Because the supporter of this blogger, including the chief of the Bureau of the Public and, uh, Security, <coughs> local public security chief are readership, are readers of the blog. That means even the very chief officials of the local cities are supportive of the bloggers. It's not about internet. It's about elite and elite friends. It's about elite networking. So that's why we happened in China's internet. On the other hand side, very underground is network of, networking of the elites, social elites. And the other uh, surface is about chat room of the common people news. For example, some protests, you use the common, use the chat room. Because chat room is easy to hide your identification, your identity, blog is not. So we, if we come to the conclusion that is, why the internet changed China? Changed China is not about the blog. It's about recruitment of the old media. It's about changing the inside of the media, inside of the institution, even the propaganda machine. The propaganda machine, inside them, they are very liberal. The people are very liberal. They do very conservative work, but inside them, they are very liberal. And the change in China is also about, about elite networking. I think it's very important thing, networking, social networking, about the elite people inside China. So, but the other dark side, that means, Chinese government very successfully controlled the content of the internet and pushed the internet to the business and entertainment one. That means you can do everything. Everything is free except politics. What is it? It's a bigger Singapore. It's a not America. It's a bigger Singapore. It's not. It's good. It's good and not bad. It's bad. No. For most of the Chinese people, it's not bad, because you have money. You have entertainment. You are free to you have free to go abroad to visit the e Egypt, to visit Paris, but you have no freedom to do any social movement, any political movement. So that's why the Chinese government won't do, and they <coughs> succeed after years of learning. They control the content where, and m most important things, they they found a very good tool to 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 adjust the public opinion. Before, they don't know the public opinion. Something just happened, for example, 1990, uh, 1989, Tiananmen mass, Tiananmen moment. They don't know why they happened. Or for example, Falun Gong suddenly happened. But now the Chinese government know what's the reason for. They know every, you know, very early age of any movement. And in the early, early, in the baby side, in the, in the baby era of the, of the moment, they just kill them through the internet because internet is very easy to find the sentiment of the people. So I think the Chinese Chinese authority use this way to make the rule very <coughs> more tight and more stability and more longer. So I don't see any change in China because of blog. I think Chinese government gets many benefits, many advantage from the blogging from the blog area. But we do hope. Social networking and chat room steer work for the future of China and for democracy. Okay. Wow. So if you have a question, you can discuss. It's a very free talk. I was wondering what percent of the Chinese people are involved in um, social movements or social networking? You go into a Wangba Internet Cafe in China, you see. You see hundreds of people, but they're all playing video games. Like, who, who's, how, what percent <coughs> of the people are involved in, in reading blogs when they have them, in reading chat? So today? that's the reason I say elite networking. I don't say networking. I, it's not the networking in the inner states. The inner states is common people social networking. But China, no. Only middle class, only the, the guy who had an idea of social change, they attend this moment of the networking. So I call it elite, elite networking, not common people. It's true that in the internet cafe, most of them, 90% of them just do video game. What about QQ? QQ is just a... If we get, we get some no networking there, 
Yeah, these are not working. It's about the social. It's the personal life and enter right. entertainment. QQ is a to because server is inside China. Yeah, you. you record every sensitive things. Even in the in the in the program itself, they have a DLL um, part. They they're very funny thing. They are the long list of the sensitive words. If you, you will find the QQ program, it's easy to control. Can can I'm sorry. No, no, please go ahead. Would it be possible for them to block Gmail and um, <coughs> what block Gmail? What do you mean block? Gmail? Well, you say, well, you say that block. they block all these different things. But block? Why not block? Block? Because stop. Uh, about business now. It's the business too, it's too important to businesses. It's too important to people in the government. Is that? No, no. I think uh, yeah, it, it, because um, we have not a business. Uh, we have not a foreign countries have their have their uh, employee employers employees in Ch in China. Many many others. They only use Gmail because Gmail is so good. <laughs> So if they block Gmail, that means business loss. Oh, they don't okay. because you know China is not a communist party. It's a typical capitalism party. The company, big company, is the god. You know, we we, mm. we think the company is very important. So we can't just block Gmail. Gmail is I I can't imagine some days. So, so, so Gmail is part of infrastructure, as it turns out. But they they can control too because we can use Gmail to do some networking. <coughs> very freely because they can't. So it's so it's, it's a safe area. It's right? safe. It's, like, it's very safe now. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I would think if Google knows that they're going to do as much as they can not to change Gmail. Because they can't. Because <coughs> the government can't. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. This guy was first. Oh yeah, sure. Great, thank you. Um, <coughs> first of all, the divide between urban and rural logging. I'm guessing that it's mostly urban and less rural. Is that actually? The case? What? Sorry. The divide between urban, so bloggers in cities. Urban and oh yeah, yeah. I I I think the blog is only happened in the city. I don't think I I can't imagine some rural a rural area can you know can do some blogging thing. But they just go to the internet cafe to browse the news or do some video game. Yeah. And then I guess I was wondering also if that mapping that over um, where keyword censorship is set. If that's a national level thing, then maybe local movements will have a better chance of taking root in the blogs here because the national government might just be aware of what's going on in the local space. I think, yes. I think it's an, another side of the internet. Internet have no relation, uh, have no difference between the central and the, the local, because they are they are together. We for media we have local media, we central media, national media, but internet they are not all national. National, it's easy to national. We talked earlier about there was a trend towards using chat rooms again as a way of spreading information. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit how, what kind of ideas might spread through the chat rooms and how that might work? And also what kind of surveillance or, uh, or countervailing uh, efforts the government might be taking against uh, seditious ideas or bad ideas spreading through chat rooms? I think a chat room is a, it's a kind of two-edged sword. That means in the era of the anti-Japan Moment in a 2005. Have you remember that? Oh, yeah. All the anti-Japan Japanese movement, the the sentimental, just spread from the chat room. Chat room is not only liberal guys like conservative guys also like, because you can hide your an identity. It's easy to hide your identity. You just uh, use a proxy. You it's easy to hide that. So I think chat room is the only way. We can say freedom sp speech. I can use chat room very freely. I can sp criticize the government, criticize to to leak any news I know. And I, if, if I knew some technology to protect myself, it is okay. It's not blog. Blog can do that, but chat room can do. So that's why now the the the, the media monitoring project in the states. They what they do. They just monitor every chat room. It's not bloggers. In fact, it's chat room. Because can you imagine the very sensitive news is from a blogger without do some very dangerous to the to the blogger himself? No, I can't imagine. So very sensitive news now just now leak from the chat rooms. A quick one is um, is red flag a knockoff of red hat? What? So red flag is the 
is the Chinese version of Linux. It's the, chi the oh, Chinese yeah. national yeah, distri yeah, yeah. distribution of Linux. I'm wondering if it's a knockoff of Red Hat. You're saying that there's these copies of other familiar. Yeah, yeah. Programs. I think Red Flag. Uh, they they come and just use the Red Flag. They don't use the the original market one. They use the Red Flag as the official. Um, the, uh, the government use the application there. Yeah, they use the copyright, but they don't trust the American version. But they think they have some backdoors of that. They, they oh, use, really? Of course. For example, we, we, um, why now Microsoft, uh, we can accept Microsoft as the government to use the software <coughs> just because the of that. They give we code. Oh, okay. That, some, Microsoft gave code to the Chinese government. Make sure that all the part of that, we have no backdoor of that. Of course, we have the government there. So we can use an... So they have the source code? Is the source code to, to, to Windows? Is that? What I mean? Yes. Yeah, so Is it the source code to Windows? So, so, the, so the Chinese government has the source code to Windows? Oh, that's, that's What's well, some part, very important part of the, of the code to the government, they make sure that there is no, yeah. there is no back, back door of the software. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Michael, you, you said something very, very interesting at the end of the talk. You said a lot of interesting things in the talk, but one thing that really struck me was this statement that China is not America, not becoming America, becoming a very big Singapore. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that a lot of us who work in IT for development have seen is that actually Singapore is a model that a lot of countries are, are following. You have modernization, but you have control. Rebecca McKinnon, who used to be a fellow here, friend of yours, friend of mine, speculates that the Chinese internet that we see today is so much freer than many Chinese people were 10 years ago, that the vast majority are pretty satisfied with the new opportunities and the new tools they have. So what I want from you is a, a number. What percent of Chinese people do you think are sort of aware of the levels of restriction, the levels of censorship, and are inclined to find a way around the censorship, to find a proxy, to use a tool to get around it. Is it less than 1%? Is it 10%? What percent of people actually care about this and are willing to look for a way around the, the Great Firewall? I think before I answer that question, I want to tell you a funny thing. So we, or talk about China. So, but you know, the Chinese now, the the personal life is so free. I, when the first time I came to America and Europe, I find it so conservative, <laughs> because we are so conservative. I mean, you know, um, it's easier in in in, Amer in China that we have the you know, sex before the marriage is we and easier to have the homosexual and without punishment and the warning and is easier you know the mu may have the 70 uh, you know men to have sex with and and he get very she gets very famous and um, no but uh, we have no conservative party yeah we have no you know the god we have no god yeah the problem is why chinese government allow we Chinese people have so much freedom about sex, about business. You know, business, we are very freedom. We have no, it's just like a capitalism, it's not like a socialism, because we have no welfare. And it is easy, it's just like a very cruel capitalism, and very easy for Chinese young people now to, fi to found a new company. It's easy, it's easy. That means if you get money, you want to earn the money, just earn the money. It's easy for you. But why Chinese allow government allow people to have so much freedom, much more freedom than American about personal life and economy life, just because they want them to accept ex exchange of the political part of their freedom. That means I give you freedom. That's much, much better than your parents. But you hang out your freedom of speech. And even you hang out your idea that we, uh, and I mean your your parents once have because of our parents or me, we and I I I have a, a I was born in 1975, but we now talk about the generation the 1980s. We have some uh, in generation gap that I have the idea of a social change 
I want to change China to democracy, but they are not, because I experienced the Tiananmen mask, but they are not. So the new generation just accept exchange that we China arise. We China are rich. We have much more freedom about personal life than America, but as, as an exchange, you should hang out your political freedom. It's not big deal. Political is uh, only, only very weird people care. It's not about you care. So I think that's the reason. So if you say the percentage, I think ni at least the 90, 95 percent of the people don't care politics, uh, don't care about the sensitive. Because it's easy for them to use QQ, use, you know, use the Sena.com to find uh, all the celebrity news and find the very paparazzi, find every good news from the internet, or uh, another and on anti-Japan news. It's easy for them. But if you want to find very, you know, hard politics, it's very hard. It's a big exchange. I think in this case, China, Chinese government succeed. They succeed very much. I don't, I can't see any hope that you can change the situation. When I talk about networking, I only talk about elite networking. But networking with the, there is a big gap between the networking with and the action. Action is also very real in China. But action speak loud. So the, my words, I am my words, that's record. It's a internet in, in the States, it's a, about uh, Che Guevara. But in China, it's a very harmonic ship. It's a very harmonic ship. They can use it very beautiful, but it's good. But it's, it's not Chigava, Chigavara. I want to kind of add on to Ethan's question, just to maybe reframe it. Is it more that, that the vast majority, like you said, 95% of Chinese people are satisfied with the internet, or they, they may ha be annoyed, or there may be problems with getting certain information, but there's just nothing to be done about it. It's just part of the system that they live with. I think that that's kind of a distinction. And also, um, I'm wondering, in terms of st issues that are not just strictly political in terms of like the party or whatever, but that are very peripheral but still related, so like financial information, um, all those kinds of issues that I include an element of transparency, like environmental protection. Um, you have like land rights. I mean, a lot of kind of city management, things like that. that aren't necessarily political, but do have, do I think, become political because. Yeah, I think it's just, they have uh, some kind of, you know, line from the black to white. The, the white is very clean, non-politics, but black is politics. They, ju they just value the case. The case if in the line, you know, with, with very clear, with very close to the political one, they just bend. So, so maybe we have some space in the gray one. Maybe we just, live in the gray one. For example, environment. You can tell environment is social or is politics. I don't know. Some cases is social, some cases is political. They just depend on, this depend on, depend on the situation, depend on the feeling of the officials, I don't know. But some cases is banned, some cases don't ban. But only this, only the, this thing only happened in the gray part. That means they have no very clearly value of the non-politics or politics. But they, they value the internet censorship just like this way. More political thing, they get more censorship. That means they want to build up a new Singapore, a big Singapore. But of course, we have much freedom than Singapore, of course. Can you unpack Singapore a little bit more first when you say a big Singapore? In a, in a, in a two or three sentences, what do you mean by that? That means, that means you are a happy citizen without any political idea. Very happy. A you city for its own sake. What city? Know, a city for its own sake? I mean, it's just cityness or... What's, what's a happy city? Uh, happy uh, citizen. I mean, happy citizen. Happy people. Oh, happy citizen, okay. Yeah. okay. You are a happy citizen without any political ideas. The rise of Britney Spears, not... <laughs> wow. The, the, well, I don't know, well, but <laughs> it's, it's just the case. That means... Yeah. That we, when, when we Chinese authorities think what is the real citizenship, the citizenship is you are very elite. You can earn money. 
you have very good position and middle class, and at the same time, you are good boy of the party. That means you are good citizen without any political dissenting. So we, we talked um, very convincingly about the, the, the kind of uh, change in, from propaganda to media and the change of different kinds of technology uses for political or social discourse. What do you see as the next iteration? Where is it going to go next? Okay. What's going to happen with the, I mean, the 500,000 chat rooms or whatever there are in the, however many blogs are claimed, 40 million or some incredible number of blogs? What's going to happen next, and where yeah. is it going to move? I, what's I, going to happen with mobile? I also want to talk about that. It's a, the first uh, it's prediction is not isn't very personal. It's not, you know, who who who, who knows the future? But the first thing is forget everything centralized. For example, Twitter. Forget it. I can't imagine Twitter can become very popular in China, because short messenger are more convenient, and and Twitter needs the server. And so forget every centralized things. The second thing is networking of the elite become more and more popular. That means, you know, in Beijing, just like, uh, I don't know America, but in Beijing we call Chen's circle. Every elite have a group. If you want to enter the group, you need some permission, you know, like a club. It's, a, it's a just a situation in Beijing. But the, 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 the internet, the, the, the networking just, uh, to build up a virtual and internet version of a group of the trends. That means it's very happy things to all the elite can easily organize through the internet, but secretly. This is a very good situation for the changing for the changing of China because some days if the political situation changed, the next day all the media will become liberal. All the guys will face, will embrace the democracy. No, any conservative left because everyone can say, no, it's only my job because inside them is very liberal. So I think with the, with the networking, social elite networking build up, it is very good for Chinese to avoid some kind of chaos, you know, because if something suddenly happened, for example, the central government just collapsed because of the banking system. What happened? You should need some organization. But the organization on the ground, you can't exist because party don't allow you to do that. But internet, we still have some kind of organization, virtual one, secretly, but very effective. So it is a good side in the, few, in, 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 the few, in, in the future five years, we will see the trend that elite networking become stronger and stronger. That means very important because they can change the inside of the of the China. But so the the third one is uh, who can change China? Only party themselves can change China. Party member in them um, can change China because even the party member who control the internet, they are liberal too. They only live in the different life, but uh, inside them they are liberal. They are internet guy. So I'm very. You know, confidence about the future of China just because we are born in the internet. Because the old guy can die, will die, the new generation of the internet will dominate the old society. This is the future of China. Michael, are, are, those, are those people getting involved with the party? Are they getting involved with politics? Some I, I know that, for instance, it's become very popular to pass around the sort of essays that you have to use to gain party membership or gain party promotion, that you can go onto the internet and you can download an essay that's very likely to get you passed by the local party committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like the US Army. Is, is, that, is that a sign that the people who, as you say, have internet in their hearts are becoming influential within the party? I think it's a good, very it's an example, but not a very good example because this thing, this thing <laughs> happened more typical in Iran. Uh, in Iran, even the president himself is a very famous blogger. Yeah. But we, officials in China, seldom do blogging. I don't know because we don't need elections, so we don't know, need blog. <laughs> blog is a show; it's not the easiest thing. But. Inside them is a network, internet, because from now on, all the news, even 
including including the party members, they get the news from the internet. For example, the president himself, they have an uh, office, every day gathering the internet news from the chat rooms. It kind of be, because we before we use the Xinhua news agency from the local places, uh, correspondent to get news to the central government to very secretly, very report every detail about officials. But now they use the internet to, to gathering the very intelligent, very secret news of the local movement of Bonai, you know, case. That means even the president himself, even the prime minister himself, they know internet is good. They know block is good. Okay, what's the definition of block? Who cares, but block is good. <laughs> It's, it's the direction. Yeah, it means, of course, we are, we are very, we are not good, but we are not so bad. We still, we know internet and the blog is good. Of course, we change the name. For example, we Chinese all know democracy is good, but we don't know, we don't, we don't use the westernized democracy. We use Chinese democracy. It's a party controlled democracy. But at least we think, Democracy is good. That just happened on the internet. Internet is good, but the American internet is not good. Chinese internet is good. We should power it, proud of it. A quick one. What, if anything, is left of the old Mao era communist ideology besides the name and the color of the flag? <laughs> I don't know. Nothing. But in China, name is very important. You know, Kung Fu. the Communist Party name. The name is very important. We call the uh, in the philosoph Chinese philosophy, name is everything. If you get the name, you get everything. Who cares inside? The name is very important. We, we the party will never change the name because if since they change the name, everything will be changed. Because now it's, they only have, they only left the name, left the propaganda system, left the, the control to the media and control to the military. But the, about ideology, they just lost. They are totally embraced the capitalism. It's a, it's a much more capital than France. You know, mm -hmm. France is so social. You know, mm -hmm. you know. I will tell the truth. This time I w w travel in Paris. It strikes, so mm -hmm. I, I can only stay at the, in the hotel. Chinese can, cannot imagine what is strike because we are so capitalism. Wow. Well, but, you know, Doc, you've got the same thing in this country. Is it the same uh, Republican Party under Lincoln as it is under Bush? No, it's not, but I'm just wondering what... It, it was just, it's just interesting to me that that had been around for as long as it was. What might remain of it? And you just answered it, you know, it's the control of the military, the yeah. propaganda machine. Yeah. The rest of it. And, and the thing you said about name is really interesting and important, I think. It's a, yeah. not something we perceive here because there's nothing analogous to it. Yeah, because I think the party it's, it's branding, uh, retreat, it's extreme, we don't understand retreat from, the, from the, the, the main part of the life, of the person, the people's life. Because before, in the Cultural Revolutionary, the party controlled everything, just like Iran, just like uh, Vietnam. But now, after the, the, the fear the, of the, the Cultural Revolutionary, they Deng Xiaoping realized that we can only kept kept the name, kept the military propaganda, and the con and the, the personal control, personnel control. Everything left, I turn, I, I I just uh, hand out to the market to the people. I don't care because those things are very important, are very critical to power. Power is more most important. Who care about the inside? I don't know. So maybe in the future. The party just change, 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 change to, change to a party was very similar to the European party. We can't darkly tell the difference between them and this. Maybe this we are beginning of the Chinese democracy. It just happened not one, one day. It happened about ten years, very gradually. I don't know. So if somehow magically. Um, truly trustworthy anonymous blogging were enabled. If the infrastructure were there and people felt that they could blog safely without fear of reprisal, um, would it only be the elite that would do it? Um, would, would, do you think there would be any movement, any enlarging of the... It will be the problem. We, we want to talk about politics. Politic with, the, with, with power in the politics is with the name. That means 
if you want to devote yourself to the politics, oh. it's all about name. Only name can change the politi political situation. If you have no name in the internet, who cares about you? This is the problem. If you want to have a name, you will be, be face the danger of the censorship of the control. So, of course, it is very idea things. If we're very safe for me without my name, I block. I never write any articles without my name anti because I think name name is my power. Without my name, I just lost my power. If I write an article, for example, if Tom Tom Cru uh, sorry Tom Friedman write an article without his name, who cares? You know. Who cares? It's a, it's a very tiny little article. So only that, only names matters. If George Bush speak without the name of George Bush, who cares? It's just a kindergarten guy say, speak of that. So, so how do you establish a name? Yeah, so I mean, there's a possibility of, in the West of, of creating a pseudonym. Yeah. And links go in, and you get known for your pseudonym, and nobody, uh, people may not know who you actually are, but they recognize that this is a voice that they've read before, and be, the name takes on some power, although no connection <coughs> to the actual person. Is, that is happened that here. Not a possi I know, is I that, know. That's not a possibility? Is that not how it works? Or? It only happens about the, the news breaking, breaking up. If you want to break up a news, you can use it this way, because a clue is very important for the the, the, the following news, but the most important is not the beginning; it's the out, afterward, afterwards. I mean, afterwards, the, the coverage of the media. Without the, the co coverage of the media, if only one blog, one no name blog to speak out, you know, the CBS guy have a lie. So who cares? But oh, but now just the, the other media covered, it becomes it matters. But Chinese things is happened to. The, we media doesn't cover in many cases because this, this thing is very sensitive. But you, you the, the 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 case you you mentioned it just happened in China. Some news is just because of very no name clue from the internet. No, nobody knows who who spread out. But uh, after that, the the, the news me, uh, me outlet just to cover that become very important. But most important is media. It's not the beginning. I think. But now media is totally controlled by the party. So I can't say, I can't tell what, yeah. But I have to ask one somewhat self-serving question. <clears throat> uh, so when your uh, blog was pulled by Microsoft, this of course made international news. And it also interestingly uh, provoked a reaction in Microsoft in their policies. So it got them to change a uh, process by which they were pulling blogs like yours. Um, in re the, the letter that Stephanie um, referred to, your kind of reaction to the Global Online Freedom Act basically says, you know, great if you guys, if you Americans want to do this, but this is really our problem. We need the, the People's Republic of China. We need our government to protect our rights to free expression. Um, so um, one of the things that, that uh, we're working on here is a discussion with these international internet companies human rights groups, socially responsible investors, and others on a code of conduct, on some sort of a mechanism uh, for these companies to behave better or more responsibly in environments like China, not only China, but certainly including it. And as you noted, it's challenging. You said, I think Microsoft and, and uh, Yahoo have gotten better, but still I think there's a long way to go. Do you have um, advice, recommendations, or things that you would like to see international information and communication technology companies do um, either in China or in any kind of regime anywhere anywhere in the world, including the U.S., you know, behaviors that you would expect of them? The reason why I wrote, I wrote to the Congress said the, the ban to the American company who compromised to the Chinese government is not necessary and not good. It's because, I give you an example, Google. Google have some kind of compromised about the Chinese version of the... If the Congress said, Google, you have compromised, so just quit. Oh my God, how about Gmail? <laughs> Gmail is about everything, you know. And then Microsoft. You know, Microsoft just shut down my blog. So the Congress said, okay, you are very bad, so you should quit from the Chinese market. You cannot to, to deal with the evil, okay. So how about Messenger, MS Messengers? 
We just use that to chat with my close friend with, uh, about the liberal informations. So you can do that. Of course, uh, you, for Congress, it's very black and white. It's clean, very you know, moral clean things to, to just quit from the evil. But it will be a very big impact to the Chinese thing. Because Chinese people, we depend on this tour to express, to communicate our information of, about our freedom, about, about rights. If you just uh, to, like, uh, reg regard it as a package to go all out, go together or out, go out together, the real cause is the Chinese freedom. It's the freedom of the Chinese people. So that's why I wrote the letter to the Congress that so I think it's not necessary and not good. But except Yahoo, Yahoo is a real bad thing. Every time I say Yahoo, Yahoo didn't do any good to China. But about that, what's my advice? My, my advice is give more and more positive information to the Chinese society that internet is the trend. Internet is the good, it's the good thing. That means Chinese authorities, they know they, they like the trend. They like to become very mainstream. They don't want to become very, you know, you know, like a North Korea, don't know the mainstream. They want to become a membership of the uh, internet, international community, become big five to communicate with you know, the other USA, America, and Russia. They, they become, uh, others regard themselves as a responsibility. So that's, we encourage them to do more things about the internet and to continue to say it, internet is good and introduce more and more tools to Chinese people and sponsor more and more, you know, very liberal part application inside China. That's the, the, the things the outside world to do. Encourage, not only blame. Blaming, blaming game is good, uh, is necessary, it's very, it's, it's, it's necessary because we need them to blame them. But sometimes it doesn't work because Chinese government, Chinese people don't like blame. It's not like uh, American, American people like uh, some kind of criticism, it's make the balance of that. We, we just like uh, good words. So give them good words to tell, to say the internet is good. We give you good things. For example, we'll give you Facebook, if we go Gmail, it's good. Just, give, uh, just take it. But now say, you should do that, you should not do that, they were not allowed. Because they are full of nationalism and think the Chinese is very good uh, race in the, in, in, in the world. Including, including me, I, I thought too. But my idea is different with the authority. I think democracy should be a value of Chinese. But they don't think, agree with me. But the common ideas with me is, is, is the Chinese is very proud of them national, nationality. Is the case. You, you cannot directly blame. You should encourage this direction. For example, blog. Blog become very popular in China. It's just because we say blog is good. If we say blog is a revolutionary to the social change, oh my God, who, who will have the blog in China? I think with that, we have to thank our guests. Thank you so much, Michael, for this great lunch.